Hi folks, my name's Damien Cooley and today I'm super excited to have Oliver Dunstan from Rose and Jones Buyers Agents in Queensland with me. Ollie, welcome and thanks for coming on. Damien, thank you. Nice to see you. Mate, what an exciting time in the Queensland real estate market. You know, New South Wales, Victoria, right around the country has all seen some pretty incredible growth and Queensland is certainly no exception to that. I know that you've spent a lot of time in Sydney um, in the real estate industry and naturally with Rose and Jones Buyers Agents and you made the decision to move to the Gold Coast. Just tell me a little bit about um, your experience about why you moved to the Gold Coast and how your time has been there in the, in the period of time that you have. Definitely. So, uh, yep, as outlined, joined Rose and Jones back in, God, seven or eight years ago now. Bright-eyed little 20-something-year-old that didn't know what a buyer's agent was, but here we are. So, obviously, earned my stripes down there in the prime markets of Sydney, have uh, been in the auction room one or two times with you, I seem to remember, which was good fun. But we made the decision to come back up here end of 2019, a bit of a, a mixture of seeing the writing on the wall for the growing market that is shaping up up here or was shaping up back then, Gold Coast, Northern New South Wales, and a little bit of a biasy factor there. I was born and raised up in the Gold Coast, so grew up in Mudrabah, then Mermaid Beach, did all my high schooling and university up here before a stint down in Sydney. So that was a compelling factor in us opening the doors up here. And naturally from 2019 to where we are now, almost two years later, there's been some pretty significant changes, not only here, but across the country and world, as you know. So it's mm. been an interesting time kind of going through those. There's been there's been a really big shift, I think, for people really, particularly during this whole lockdown period, assessing their lifestyles, assessing where they want to live, assessing where their kids are going to go to school, assessing the the upbringing that they'd like to give their, their families, uh, assessing affordability of where to buy. Are these all contributing factors that you're seeing that when you're talking to a potential purchaser who's looking to either invest or, or move their life to the Gold Coast or whether it be Byron Bay in the Northern Rivers or, or whether it be somewhere like Noosa, a lifestyle asset, I'm assuming that these are the types of conversations that you're having with these buyers, yeah? Most definitely, yeah. So you've got, I guess, twofold. You've got the owner-occupiers who are either listing and selling their real estate in Sydney, Melbourne, or even offshore in some instances, even Brisbane, and are looking to uproot their family or you know, a couple or a single and make the move up here formally. Or you've got the investors who, again, have seen the writing on the wall. They've seen the market conditions. They see the affordability compared to other areas and even the yields that are somewhat achievable. They are sharpening, which we can get to, but the attractive returns, the entry prices are all a bit of a perfect storm for people to be driven up here. But in the same breath, we've now noticed in the last kind of six to 12 months, particularly from the Sydney, Melbourne and offshore buyers who might be investing here, they've got one eye on making the move here to whether it be Byron Bay, Northern New South Wales or the Gold Coast. So they're saying, yes, Oliver, Rose and Jones, we want the right investment property that's going to have a nice mix of yield and capital growth, of course, like everyone. But we also want a couple of emotional factors there, like certain amounts of bedrooms, pools and suburb areas, because they've got a view in 5, 10, 15 years even they could call this place home. So they're keeping an eye on it in that sense too. And are you talking about people like within Australia or are you also having these conversation with expats that are, you know, in other countries right now yeah. that um, are really looking at Australia as a, a, what, like you said, one, a sound investment, but two, as a, a potential to be moving to Queensland one day? Most definitely. So the number of expat investors that we've worked for all have had a view of whether it be again a medium or long-term event horizon making the move back and actually utilizing the asset that they're buying in today's dollars because they ultimately know the growth that we've seen isn't going to you know it's not going to cease today or tomorrow it will continue so they're underpinning their prices now and retaining them as investments until they utilize them oh, i want to actually ask you a question about that because like gold coast apartments particularly uh, i think for a very long time, were quite stagnant. There wasn't a lot of, if not any, growth. And in fact, in some cases, they went backwards. Um, and that was naturally off the back of a, a significant burn that took place prior to that. Um, we've, we've seen really strong growth for the past how long? 18 months, two years. It's been building. Um, it's been particularly intense probably the last 12 months. Um, how much longer do you see that moving forward for and do you still see this market has a lot more growth in it um 
And I guess at what point or what type of investment are you looking at for your clients right now? Definitely. So I guess twofold again, the apartment side of the question. I think the ultimate and obvious shift we've witnessed this last couple of years is the developers and what they're actually bringing to the market. So go back 20 years when the Gold Coast was a bit of a, you know, a haven, surface paradise, cool and gutter, you know, the developers would blow out two bedroom, one bedroom apartments, they'd go for sheer quantity volume, how many little apartments for holiday makers can we fit in here? Whereas now it's completely flipped, whole floor, half floor, three to $5 million off the plan apartments are now all that's being developed. No one's trying to make short term accommodation units, they're all trying to uh, atta or attack or attract the downsizer market, whether it be locals, whether it be, you know, I know you've dealt with it down in Sydney. I know the barriers yeah. to entry are so high for developers in the eastern suburbs, for example. So people can't downsize in the area that they're, I guess, have grown up and have their roots in. Whereas up here, we do still have that developable land along the beachfront, which is now firmly in the sights of, again, just interstate locals and expat buyers. I mean, there's US buyers spending $5 million on new apartments on Kira and Snapper. And I guess with that, the demographic down there will greatly shift. There's going to be new amenity. It's going to just completely change the, the, whole, the whole scene down there. But then on the housing front, again, we're talking apples and apples and lemons here. The housing market obviously is you know, still up there with the most competitive. Uh, what we always look for, whether it be owner occupiers who have got attraction to the coast or it's sheerly an investment proposition, we always look back at the walkability score, which you'd know about in Sydney. A lot of high streets, some really good pockets of amenity around those really dense areas of living. Whereas up here in years gone by, it hasn't been overly important to be able to, I guess, walk to everything or ride your bike. But as the population swells, we're supposed to be hitting a million you know, punters up here by mid 2030s. Um, the walkability factor will become more paramount. Parking will become yeah. harder to achieve. There'll be paid parking everywhere like Sydney. So for our investors who are holding a long term view, it's how close can we get to the coast and local amenity? And that's really the focus for most people. Yeah, you sort of touched on, you know, the housing market just there. And I guess we look at the luxury housing market within that. I know that there was a recent study that came out suggesting that, you know, Queensland or could might have been Gold Coast in particular. So please correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, it was one of the strongest in the country. Luxury market is is, is driven by what? Is this being driven right at the moment by people just saying, look, affordability in, in luxury markets around the around the country and you, if you look at even just Sydney as an example um, and Victoria there's a lot of Victorians that are moving up the Gold Coast there's and, and Queensland there's a lot of Sydney siders that are making that decision and that they're coming possibly with reasonably good budgets to be able to say okay well we're, we're selling our luxury property in that other market which has significantly grown gone up in value and we're they almost feel like they're downsizing because from pricing, um, they're selling for a premium. They're also paying a premium, but it's significantly lower than what they would have been used to. Are you seeing a lot of that? Or are you also seeing a lot of people within Queensland itself buying these luxury homes? It's a mixture, mixture for sure. So the local market is still very strong. There, are, there is still quite a strong presence of local, you know, local money and operators who are buying and competing for these high-end homes. Um, to the point of Sydney and Melbourne punters who are selling, trading out and moving up here, regardless of whether they're spending one to two mil, five to 10 mil, they're still looking at it in that same kind of value proposition light where they might be selling an asset up here in Melbourne. They're getting equal or better value up here in terms of yeah. the dwelling type, the, the total size, the aspect, all the good stuff. And they're still retaining some of those excess sale proceeds. So mm. regardless of whether you're a $2 million or $10 million spender, if you're coming from those other markets or even offshore, you will still find and notice supreme value up here compared to them. But ultimately it comes down to, I guess, the demographic as well. Are they moving up here to actually bring their business and continue to you know, strive in the economic world or are they retiring and coming up here to maybe sell the $5 million asset in Sydney, get a $2 million, $3 million waterfront and then spend the other two on a nice boat? You know, there's, yeah. there's different yeah. drivers for different age groups, but interesting to watch. Lifestyle naturally plays a big part of it. I mean, you only have to look at the Queensland you know, weather forecast to understand that it's it's warmer, um, you know, it's 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 more relaxed. You, uh, what's the saying? Beautiful one day or amazing one day, beautiful the next. Um, there, <laughs> there is there is an absolute element. That there's truth in that, right? Because it makes you feel like you're on holidays. It makes you feel better. There are people literally sitting, particularly through this lockdown periods, wherever they may have been over the, throughout the country. 
about really questioning their what they're doing, their lives, their life goals, where they want to live, where they want to, where they want their kids to grow up. This surely is a conversation that we're seeing right now, and, and and couple that in with the whole work from home piece that people are able to move and, and uproot their whole life and move to Queensland for for want of a a better terminology, have a better quality of life in their eyes and enjoy that lifestyle, but still be able to work at their office in Sydney, but remotely from Queensland, right? So they're getting they're getting the benefit of the lifestyle benefit. They're getting the affordability benefit. Um, they're getting the they're getting what they perceive as a, a better benefit in terms of the weather, for example. Um, and Queensland's been really really progressing in terms of quality of restaurants and cafes and cosmopolitan lifestyle and shopping centres. Yes, the development has been significant, and it's so it's it's a, it's a genuine question that's, in my opinion, on the on the dining room tables of a lot of families right now. Yes, well, I guess everyone who is making the move up from Sydney, Melbourne, or even offshore, don't need to drum on the, the COVID conversation anymore. I know it's been touched on by any and everyone the last couple of years, but naturally COVID and the lockdowns have resulted in people reassessing what's important to them, what they want out of not just work, but work-life balance and all the, the fun stuff there. So most people who are coming up, that's been the big push for them. They might've had an eye up here for a while, but this has been the final, yeah. I guess, shove for them to take the plunge. So people are coming up here for that mixture of lifestyle affordability again but also like you've just mentioned the ability to now hold and retain maybe better paying or more stable employment from these southern states or even global companies that are now pushing it out there to their staff to enjoy the benefits of remote living and maybe report to the office under a certain time frame or completely work from home and i think it's another point that we talked on before we jumped on and that is you know feeding back to your last question about where's the gold coast market going how has it changed since booms of the past? And I think the most recent example of a big retraction in value up here was, of course, the GFC, where in 2008, 2009, there were some very sharp declines in property prices up here that some areas like your surfers paradise are still potentially recovering from. But what's changed since then is, as you've outlined, people are uprooting their families to actually move here. They're not getting a two-bedroom apartment in surfers paradise to use for fun. They're moving up here with a serious long-term view and goal. They're bringing their you know, I guess family expenditure, net, you know, net wealth and everything up here, which again is going to help underpin the values up here. It's not just speculative investing where if the global markets tank, there's a plethora of empty accommodation up here. There are people actually moving into these homes now, spending big bucks on new builds, renovating, and that will be what underpins the value up here moving forward through, you know, whatever this COVID cycle is. Are people, and when you look at that sort of luxury market, are people... Are people shifting more towards the beachfront home? Or do they want to be on the canals? Do they, you know, river frontage? When we talk yeah. about luxury market, particularly in the housing, you look at some of those homes, particularly along the canals around the Gold Coast, um, are just incredible properties, fabulous lifestyles, jetties, waterfront um, mansions in some cases, jetties out the front, you can put your boat out there. And like you say, I guess if they're coming from a Victoria or a, or a or at Sydney, or if they're coming from, um, if they're an expat, you know, they're bringing that money there. It, it is perceived to be a lot of value. However, that market has grown incredibly, hasn't it, in the last couple of years? It has. It has. And as you said, I think last year, we'll, we'll look up the fact, but I think the Gold Coast was one of, if not the most, the top performing luxury market, luxury market in the world yeah. in terms of growth achieved. And it'll be interesting to see how this year rolls. But Back to your, the point on luxury, there I guess are three main tiers up here. You've got, as you said, the beachfront stuff. Everyone knows Hedges Avenue, Mermaid Beach, Millionaire's Row, they call it. You've got the waterfronts on Main River up here. And then you've also got the semi-rural hinterland type properties, which you obviously have touched on with Byron. I mean, we're very fortunate up here to have beautiful coastlines surrounded by you know, World Heritage Rainforest. And we're completely locked in by that, which means that those you know, elevated, beautiful rural properties that people travel out of Sydney two or three hours to get to a 20 or 30 minutes drive from the Gold Coast airport or beach up here. So you might even see someone, which I've had instances and experience of, of learning recently, they might buy the waterfront down at the beach side where they can ride their bike to the beach, put their boat in the water, and then 20 minutes up the hill, they've got four to, four to 10 acres of lush rainforest property that they can take the grandkids or you know, have family events at. And I mean, the combined cost of two or three of those assets might only equal one or half a truly, you know, trophy Sydney or Melbourne asset. Oh, I don't know about that, Byron Bay. <laughs> Far out. 
She, uh, Byron Bay, certainly enjoyed some unbelievable growth, right? But it is interesting what you were saying about that. If, and if you look at, if you look at, say, even just Sydney for a moment, like that type of dual asset in a, in any family, there is travel time of anywhere, really, frankly, like between probably what one and a half and two and a half hours. But people, yeah, people always say, okay, give me a two to three hour <clears throat> radius around Sydney draw a circle and say, okay, where are we going to go to find that, that rural lifestyle? And, and naturally, the Southern Highlands and the Hunter Valley would, would be the two big mm. ones. But when you're, in, when you're in Queensland, I guess if you're on the Gold Coast, Byron's a lot closer, but if you're in Brisbane, it's further, right? It's that little bit, correct. But to your point, you've got the it's Northern Rivers of Byron. Correct. And you've got the northern rivers of Byron Bay, which are, you know, again, the hinterland regions that kind of border or lock in that coastal region that everyone's so in love with, which are fantastic. You've got punters in Byron Bay who might own five to $10 million houses in what they call the Golden Grid, the main streets of Byron Bay Township. And then they've got a five to $10 million farm, 45 to an hour drive away to get out of the township on the weekend. So it's interesting to watch that. I mean, we've had some experience helping some Sydney clients of ours purchase a primary production farm in the Northern Rivers outside of Byron Bay. They luckily secured that the first week COVID came to the shores of Australia, which was obviously a turbulent time and a few second guesses here and there, but lucky to pull the trigger and have since probably spent 10 months since COVID arrived in their primary production farm in the Northern Rivers rather than locked in their bolt hole in Sydney. So there's been a big sentiment shift again because of all of this. I mean, We've got clients who have been looking for beachside apartments in Byron Bay for the better part of this year, who after these extensive lockdowns have now said, no, let's up the budget. Let's get some acreage and land because who knows what life looks like the next five to 10 years. We don't want a bolt hole apartment. We want a big plot of dirt. We can go and comfortably stretch out on for six months if we need to. It really has just shifted the psyche of a lot of people. Mm. Well, it must have been a, an exciting move for you guys to uh, firstly get into the Queensland market. But, for, you know, for you personally, I'm assuming, like you said, going back to your roots where you grew up, uh, born and bred in that market, you've obviously got a lot of local knowledge. You know, for anybody who's thinking right now about investing in the Queensland market, um, to be able to make an easy phone call to you, to be able to get your local knowledge and your investment expertise in those areas is, is fantastic. So, you know, mate, well done to you and well done to uh, the team at Rose and Jones for trusting you to, uh, to go and take the business up to that marketplace. Thanks, Damien. Yeah, been really good. I know you've uh, had the odd call up to do some Northern Rivers auction calling. So hopefully now that the borders or the regional travel opens up, I hope to be uh, throwing some offers at you or some bids at you in the coming <laughs> months or year, but well, we'll see how we go. Yeah, I mean, look, it's been an exciting time for us too because um, David Holmes now heads up our uh, our Queensland uh, office for Cooley, and David focuses on the on the Brisbane Gold Coast, and uh, naturally we also cover the Northern Rivers market. So uh, David has been doing all of our auctions in those areas along with his team that he has uh, he has working with him. And um, you know, for us as a business, we really see the Queensland market as a as a as a focus point. For the auction market and that has been driven obviously off the back of the strength of the, the booming markets no question about that when you have multiple buyers com competing for a property um, that is going to drive activity which means you should be auctioning your property and um, you know that's the reason one of the big reasons why you know we really wanted to partner with david and um, and get into that marketplace but exciting times ahead and um, i'm really looking forward to seeing the continued growth in markets all around the country. You know, now that we are out of this lockdown period, people are able to uh, travel around a little bit more and hopefully with the international borders opening up very soon, that is only going to enhance the migration that we see to Australia. You spoke before about expats um, and population growth, you know, and we're, and we're talking about this now with our borders closed. You know, people have been migrating from Sydney and Victoria to Queensland but um, I'm, only, I'm only going to assume um, that we're going to see more and more people not only coming to Australia, but obviously coming to the places like Gold Coast, Northern Rivers, uh, when the borders start to open up. Do you see any big infrastructure um, projects that are going to be really be attracting more people to the Queensland market, development incentives that are attracting people to the Queensland markets? Yeah, definitely. And I guess just firstly to your main point there, I think 
noticeably once the border situation becomes more clear and people are able to freely travel from interstate and internationally, then we do foresee an, another increased bumper run over the next three to six months. And even our inquiry the last week has spoken to that. We've got clients or prospective clients who have been thinking about things for a number of months, maybe seeking pre-approvals on their finance with the view of getting up here to assess real estate and buy when they can, but have now shifted completely to say, no, we want to buy sight unseen because we fully understand once the borders open, it's going to be an absolute slugfest trying to get up there and compete with everyone else who's waiting for that opportunity. So people are jumping at the guns now to either activate loans while they can and they're pre-approved because we all know the banks are looking at tightening things or jumping the gun and actually buying something and having to cop it sight unseen to actually get their foot in the door now before this next phase of growth probably occurs post opening of the borders. So, and regarding infrastructure and all those things, I mean, don't need to harp on about the Olympics that are coming and what that's going to bring for both, you know, the Sunshine Coast, Brisbane and Gold Coast markets, but they will and are currently improving the infrastructure of light rail, which will take people from the Gold Coast airport further up towards the heavy rail to connect with Brisbane. That will be a, has always been the missing link for the Brisbane Gold Coast market so that eventually people can live, play on the Gold Coast, work in their CBD, CBD jobs in Brisbane and actually utilise public transport rather than the the slog fest of a drive up there in traffic. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a huge connectivity bonus that, that will occur. And I think you're going to find New South Brisbane, Gold Coast become a lot more as one come 2030s post Olympics. Tell me more about Noosa. I want to know more. <laughs> I just want to go on a holiday back to Noosa. I've been, <laughs> I've been, it's one of my favourite places in the world. I'm only, I'm only joking. You don't have to tell me about it, but it, it really <laughs> well, is. I'm up, I'm up there this Saturday, Sunday, so I'll well, send you a photo. Don't mate, tell but, me that. Um, don't tell me that. <laughs> Um, well, I think they just knocked they, they just knocked the record off for a residential purchase in Queensland, I think up in the high 20s. So wow. there's been some strong results up there. It's again, a very lifestyle centric market where a lot of people are now probably seeing it as an area they can live and work remotely. Yeah, They need to travel to Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, whatever the case may be. So those stretches from Majimba Beach, which are right near the airport, all the way up through the, the favourites up to Noosa are just you know booming as we know. You know, yeah. The buyer's agency model is somewhat there. I think there's a few operators out of Brisbane that somewhat get up there and maybe specialise in that field, but definitely somewhere to keep eyes on. I think, the um, again, just this proximity and ability to travel and work where you want to and live where you want to is really just going to turn that into a new market moving forward. Uh, Oli, I think it's about having someone who has local knowledge on the ground that is going to help you to not overpay for a property and, and certainly help you buy the right property is an invaluable service. And no doubt um, the Rose and Jones buyers agent group in all through Queensland is going to be incredibly, incredibly successful. Mate, um, thanks very much for uh, thanks very much for joining us today. And uh, really fabulous to have a chat with you. And I uh, hope all the everything goes really well for you for the next six months. And um, I'm sure there'll be a lot of people getting in touch to try and find something to buy. Look forward to it, Damien. Thank you very much for your support and good luck with all your deeds. My pleasure, mate. Good speaking. Thank you. All the best. Bye.